We Greens are pleased to have been able to expose the Shreddergate episode, having first given the government, specifically the Premier and the then Deputy Premier, uh, Collins, every opportunity to tell Parliament the truth before we produced the shredded document that Kim Booth had spent about 24 hours putting back together from a bag of discarded shreddings. As he said, it was the biggest jigsaw puzzle he'd ever done. Kim, please take a bow. No document signed by the Minister to that effect, no intervention by the then Secretary of the Premier's Department and no destruction of the document. It is now history that Steve Pons lied to Parliament and resigned his portfolios as a result. But it doesn't end the matter. Clearly a cover-up had been underway and just what was being covered up, why and what that implies about the way appointments are made in this state, particularly judicial appointments, and about a, a thuggish modus operandi to secure compliance to the government's questionable politics needs to be thoroughly examined, exposed and dealt with. We can't await an anti-corruption body to do this, although we do need an anti-corruption body. What we need immediately is a commission of inquiry into Shreddergate, right now. like the Greens or the Liberals or whoever continued to press the case. Doug Parkinson's defamatory comments and his don't you worry about that statement when he appeared to be channeling Joe Bjorki Peterson showed a government in a blind panic. I can't go through all those questions now, but the key ones revolve around the fact that the Premier continually debates answering about the issue of the proposed appointment of Simon Cooper. He always defects to talking about not having interfered with the appointment that finally went forward. And of course there are the other evasions around the role of the head of his department, whether she was out of control or acting on instruction, and of course the whole issue of the culture it has exposed around the way appointments were made and are made. When I'm in Parliament, uh, and uh, as it was uh, the week before last, I sometimes thought I was in a recurring nightmare. So much of this had the hallmarks of the parliamentary spade work we had to do to uncover the TCC affair. It's not a one-off, this misleading of Parliament, this evasion, this cobbling together of stories. And we don't know how many times we've never got to the bottom of what went on. The key big picture issues are these. We want government to be for all Tasmanians, especially those doing it tough, and not preferentially for, a, for government mates and favoured private corporations such as Guns Limited and Federal Hotels. Shadow from the public service. 
now highly politicised and ruled by fear and threats of, uh, of uh, retribution. And of course we also need to remove the shadow so unfairly placed over judicial and magisterial appointments. To do this, we need a package of measures to be put in place and to see the winds of change blow through government in Tasmania. Remember that the DPP has made it plain that Tasmania has no independent investigative body, too much squawking from government, that the TCCI has backed public discussion of an ICAC and that the Law Society wants one looked into. We do need and must have an independent anti-corruption body with investigatory and educative powers. judicial appointments. Similarly, Tasmanian political donations and election finance disclosure laws, because here's another right avenue for corruption that is currently unmonitored and must be pulled into line. Further, we need post-ministerial probity laws, and we do have Greens legislation for that. Those laws would deal with the potential corruption issues around an ex-minister moving straight into the corporate area they previously regulated. So, in my view, for these winds of change, Paul Lennon is not the man.